How's it going, folks? And welcome back to another episode of our adventure in the visual novel, Adventure of a Lifetime. Last episode, it looks like Emily might be starting to warm up a little bit to the ocean thanks to the guidance of Mr. Hiroki and a little bit from Chisat and maybe even Finn as they started playing around in the water. Yeah. And of course, she was so mesmerized by the beauty of the ocean that she almost forgot to breathe and drowned just like that. And of course, starting to warm up to Finn just a little bit after trying to escape from him, to which he did help her as she fell face first into the water again, then took off with her on his back. So, let's find out what's going to happen. Will she drown? Will she become more accustomed? Let's see if we get an answer this time around on this episode of... Adventure of a Lifetime Playthrough. You asked me, Ms. Machiko, and can you fix your attitude while you're at it? All right, let's go. I was nowhere near Cheers' level when it came to swimming, so I decided to wade in the inlet. About five minutes later, the two girls and one dolphin came back to the beach. How far out did you go? Finn had been quite careful with Emily and kept his speed under tight control. Since it was Emily's first time on a dolphin, it probably still felt incredibly fast. She had been trembling, but suddenly her eyes sparkled as she pumped her fist in the air. I can only picture like, it was beautiful! <laughs> oh man! <laughs> Emily told me all about the things she'd seen. Hmm. All this fish talk is making me hungry. I think we'll have some sashimi for dinner tonight. Like you two weren't eating those cute little fish last night. How? Since when did they become so friendly? I think they had a little girl talk session. This was getting absurd. Well, at least you're done hating the sea. You shouldn't have said that, buddy. It sounded like she had enjoyed herself, though. Maybe it was like riding a roller coaster for her. That is true. Anyway, let's go ahead and have some fun. We ran around the shallows like little kids. Splashing, jumping, floating on the surface like jellyfish. I was in my pants and Emily in her uniform, but we didn't care at all. After about an hour, we were all totally exhausted. Let's go rest in the shade. Where's all that energy coming from? It's an actual burn, you know. In bad cases, they blister. <laughs> Emily took off running out of the water and threw herself into the shade of the rocks. Chisa and I strolled over to lay down in the shade. 
また後でね。We cooled down under the shade of rocks, and eventually, we all closed our eyes. That's right, the typhoon. Oh snap! The sounds of rising winds could be heard. I could feel something cold hitting my bare skin. Finn was getting more frantic. Everyone, cross your fingers. My eyes opened as the cold drops hit my face. Where am I? Why am I sleeping here? In my half-asleep mind, the scenery looked unfamiliar, and I couldn't remember how I ended up here. But as my mind began to clear. A sudden realization took all the blood from my face. This place was quite familiar, but I had never seen it look so ominous and windswept. Chisa, wake up! Emily, Emily, you too, get up! Papa, I don't know. I looked at the sky. The clear, the clear blue sky. Okay, that was a complete typo there. The clear blue sky was covered in dark gray clouds. Below them, the shrill wind howled through the cliffs and across the beach. And there's Finn over there trying to warn him, like y'all need to get y'all rubs up. Finn was shrieking at Chisa from the water, trying to warn her. This is bad. We're still on Minamijima, and look at the sky. Chisa began checking the weather forecast on her smartphone, but it was obvious. Emily, wake up! Emily! We have to get out of here! Chisa was already up and getting the canoe ready to go. I ran over to help. Come on, Emily, help! The three of us pushed the canoe off the beach and into the water. We quickly climbed inside as Chisa tried to start the engine. Of course, it wouldn't start. What? Is it broken? Uh, maybe prime it. Check the fuel. Instinctively, I grabbed the paddles and started rowing. Chisa kept trying the engine, but it wasn't looking promising. There was clearly no choice but to row back to Shijijima, but that soon became impossible too. The small inlet was sheltered. So there were hardly any waves at all, but right beyond the inlet, the sea was in an uproar. And then the skies opened up. I used the paddles to take us back to the beach. We have to pull it up so it doesn't get swept away. As we pulled the canoe onto the beach, 
The heavy rain continued, and our clothes, dry after our nap, were soon soaked again. Let's head for a cave. We rushed to sh take shelter in one of the caves in the rocky hillside. We found level ground and tried to get comfortable. Emily and Chisa sat to either side of me. Outside, the heavy rain had grown into a full-on storm. The typhoons in the Ogasawara Islands were different from the mainland, and for a first-timer, they could be terrifying. If we were out in the open water now, we could have drowned. <laughs> Chisa said gloomily, listening to the wind wailing outside. We had already contacted our families and been told to sit tight in the cave. Hmm? Emily took my hand, her expression worried. Yeah, sure. Emily gripped my hand a little more tightly. What are you doing, Chisa? Chisa said, grabbing my arm and squeezing up against me. Uh, hey! That's not what I meant. Chisa was in her swimsuit, and I was shirtless. With her so close, her bare skin sat right against me. You're okay. Just focus, buddy. Just focus, alright? Just block all that out, and focus. FOCUS! You're... Boob is touching me. Hiroki, didn't I just tell you to focus? Just, just, just focus! Jeez! Focus! N never mind. There you go, buddy. With Chisa's breaths resting against my arm, its softness was made all the more apparent. When we were little, Chisa and I had bathed together, but there had been no trace of the body filling her bikini now. Gosh, here we go. Oh gosh. <coughs> Suddenly, a huge gust of wind blew into the cave, and the two girls shrieked and grabbed onto me. It was hard to breathe, squeezed between them. We should be safe in this cave. <coughs> Emily pulled closer, her eyes full of tears. Though her eyes also suggested that any uninvited advances would be swiftly rejected. This was a bunker used by the Imperial Japanese Army in World War II, right, Chisa? <laughs> After hearing that, Emily seemed to become bothered by something else. Supposedly, there was a base here on Ogasawara. So all of the sunken battleships and freighters in the seas around the Ogasawara Islands turned into the tourist attractions. The famous Battle of Iwo Jima took place on the Ogasawara Islands. But that was still far from Chichijima. The Ogasawara Islands went pretty far out into the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> Oh gosh. Chisa used a spooky voice in an attempt to scare Emily. Emily 
いないもんいるなら出してみなさいよいいのダメイヤポなし As Emily buried her face in my shoulder, it was apparent that she was afraid of more than the sea. Come on, Chisa, that's enough. Hi. Ma, Kono Mama Tashiraga, Yuren, Natchao Kamo Shin Nai Shine. Emily became gloomy when she remembered our situation. Watashtachi, Koko de Shin Jao no Kono. You're getting carried away. We'll make it back once the storm clears. <coughs> A poorly timed gust of wind blew in, getting the girls all worked up again. The two of them tighten their grips like anacondas. With that, she glared at Chisa's hand on my arm. Come on, girls, cut it out! It does too! If you two are going to keep arguing, stop squeezing me! You know, for a group of girls that just said that it has nothing to do with me, why are you asking for my input now? Stop it right now! I put myself between them to stop their fight. This is not the time for a fight! Right now, we have to work together! Emily turned her back to us and laying down on the floor of the cave. Closed her eyes, but never released my hand. Chisa turned away and laid down. She didn't hold my hand, but pushed her back right against mine. It looked like they were both going to sleep in a huff. Oh boy. It would be a while before the typhoon moved on. And sleeping was a much better way to kill time than fighting. I made myself comfortable and decided to continue my nap. I 
as I rubbed the sleep from my eyes, I realized something felt off about my hand. Something that should have been holding on tightly was gone. And we're going to find out exactly what it was that's missing on the next episode. Ah, uh, the cliffhangers. <laughs> well, quite the showdown between the two, so apparently they do recognize one thing or another about each other. And, uh, yeah, apparently there's definitely a love triangle from what I can tell going on. Although, that love triangle triangle related to the tri-factor of it will obviously never be allowed into the conversation until it's convenient, of course, from what I can tell, which is like, come on, folks. But we'll find out how this goes down in the episodes to come. But with that, thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw this time around, maybe consider leaving a like. And if you want to see more, maybe consider subscribing if you haven't already. And until next time, happy mixing, everyone.